Hello again, welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, almost out of April already. <laughs> How crazy is this? It just seems I like mean, at least here it's, I thought I was ahead of the game gardening-wise. It's spring, and I have three tulips. <laughs> I have little I, grape hyacinths. I don't, I, every year I say I want to plant, like, you know, 100 tulip bulbs, and I don't. Okay, so I did plant 100 tulip and bulbs. you got three. When we moved into the house, so yeah. let's say four or five years ago. Uh, the squirrels yeah. really, really, really like them. They're like... You know, like little that. smogger's board. So uh, they ate a bunch. And then I went to check, actually, before I came now. And I was like, oh, there are four that have heads on them. But one of them's already, like, calf-eaten. So oh. um, I've got um, surprised. Well, we have bunnies, which is strange. I've never had bunnies. We have at oh, least wow. we saw two. Like, you know, when you see something on the corner of your eye and you're like, are those bunnies? <laughs> Wild <laughs> rabbits of Manchester, guys. And there's one that comes down and eats under our bird feeder. We haven't seen him in a couple oh. days, but he comes and goes. And then this morning, Dan's standing there drinking his coffee, looking out the kitchen window, and I'm thinking he's just watching the birds. He goes, nope, I'm watching the chippy run, jump. From, and I'm like, chippy? I have a chipmunk again. Yelled at the cat preemptively that he's not allowed to use the chippies as fling toys. <laughs> Because that's what the cat <laughs> Our cat doesn't eat any of the things that it catches. It just throws them until they're not able to live Aww. anymore. But there was a little chipmunk jumping from bird feeder to bird feeder. Oh, wow. It was cute. I don't, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I want to put out some bird feeders now. I was, I was disappointed. I got an email from uh, the antique store down on Elm yeah. Street, uh, when when Governor Sununu lifted the mask mandate, yeah. I was like, yay, I want to go get some old antique I want to go picking, as they say, yes. or I heard... I know you're looking for bird... Thrifting. Yes. I heard that as a verb for the first time thrifting, yesterday. It's about, which is true, because I'm not... Like, when I'm going out, I'm not looking for antiques by any means, for the most part. I'm just looking for things that I can use in my life. Tammy's looking for a deal. I am looking for a deal. <laughs> Which is handy if you have a friend who is good at that stuff. Um, but yeah, so they treasure hunting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I was going to go back to the store, but then they let everyone know that they are still... Still masking. Yeah, so I'm yeah, going to wait Unfortunately, wait a the garden while. center is too. But I figure... I think I've, for the garden center... Um, which of I'm course going, is it doesn't make any outdoors. sense because it's outdoors. Um, I figure I'll go and play dumb, and I'll plan on going. Like I'll go once and I'll load up my and I'm. They open this went. They open tomorrow. I doubt I'll go before this weekend. But next, like next week or the week after, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna play dumb and I'm gonna load up my stuff. And sadly, places that choose to re still require masks are the places that I choose mostly not to go to just because i I'm, I'm done yeah and honestly i read a study yesterday someone sent it to me i tried to share it on facebook of yeah, course, course couldn't. Well, like, uh, uh, that well, actually well. is a study that says there really is no difference between six feet no, no. feet 60 feet uh you know so be that as it may well, i think we are now in formally in covid fatigue phase yes. um, well good uh interesting so there i know there's a facebook group that has um Places people can post that aren't requiring masks. Um, you know, I've been going to Murphy's all along. Murphy's has never really been an ad, uh, pushing the mask at all, and they're definitely not doing it now. Because um, this coming, what would it be, next Thursday, I guess? Next Friday is the end of the, for all but nine different industry types, it goes to just general recommendations. So in other words, restaurants, their staff will no longer be required to wear a mask. I took a photo. I parked on Lowell Street, and I took a photo on the way here at Panucci that yeah. has a sign on the door, and I blame every statist out there that says, due to COVID, no dancing allowed. Yeah, because dancing. So, because, you know, jurors know if you're dancing or sitting so, or standing or, uh, you Friday know, was Dan <laughs> <laughs> Friday was Dan's birthday, and I wanted to, I had seen something on Facebook, and I wanted to go. We went to Elm House of Pizza. How was that? I will tell you, if you do not eat, um, if you do not choose to eat a lot of um, regular crust pizza. They have an amazing um, cauliflower So I feel crust. like three people posted yep. in the past yep. weekend. So we actually no, were going to get takeout. And they have no mask. They, yeah, but they don't do takeout, I don't think. Um, I think they only do in I know service. they were starting originally that they would not have takeout because I think that, you know, they got to gear up. new restaurants um, But we went that. there. We had a 
delicious. We tried two different pizzas. We tried one with the cauliflower crust and one with the regular crust to try to, and all four of us decided that we thought the cauliflower crust was actually yummier. Wow. Um, so, I'm excited. I haven't had only, a pizza in a year. It's only so. a 12 inch <laughs> pizza, happen. but we got one with a lot of toppings on it. I think it was like their, the queen city special or okay. something. Um, so that on cauliflower is usually tough. And it held up fine. Oh, wow. Um, okay, I'm definitely going to go check it out. And then Dan and I went there for lunch yesterday because we have a hard time. A lot of times we don't go to lunch till after 2, and a lot of the lunch places are closed. Um, so we went there. We had I had a great burger. The wings were good. Um, so And I talked with Tim Baines, one of the owners. Um, I said I was actually a little surprised that we I expected it to require a mask. I really did. And he said, yeah, I'm not going to turn away business over a mask. Yeah. Um, it's, it's So that was refreshing. Um, also on my favorite um, business, my favorite restaurant places, um, for anybody who has partaked in Charlie's in Goffstown that's in the mobile station, they are moving to the Cody's Diner on the corner. Oh. On the corner of Pennard Street and Mast Road. I actually saw that the bowling yeah. alley on it's that corner for rent, is for open. rent as well. Yeah, and I was like, so, okay, that's weird because that so, would be kind of fun. Yeah. Have a have like a fifties bowling alley. But I mean, how many people would? It's it's that small ball. I mean, I think you would have to make it a destination. You would have to make it gimmicky. Like maybe if you added a birthday parties. Yes, axe throwing. So do two lanes of (laughs) small ball bowling, and then and then axe throwing. Axe throwing because that's a that's that's a trend. So yeah, so I'm very excited. That suits my mood (laughs) about Charlie's moving to Cody's because that's like. Long, di- you know, it's not long walk, but I mean, it, we walk to Cumberland yeah. for coffee sometimes, so we. Can walk. It's a good walk, and 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 it's um, I'm, I, it'll be good for them because they were really cramped. It always swamped, and I'm I just hope sometimes people expand and it goes bad. I hope that do- isn't the case. No, I hope not either. But I will say I've only I think once or twice because it's hard to get. The but they make they make that, a hamburger, folks. A look- they make a hamburger that it because I can't eat bread, right? So low carb, and so they make it between two slices yeah. of cheese. A so you're like, no, it's, so mm. we we look at the special. I mean, I can only eat half of it. It's, it's only, a lot. Dan and I <laughs> split one because yeah. it's way too much, and they have delicious fries, which I shouldn't eat, but they are delicious, and they have really good onion rings. Um, I, I will ignore Dan, those parts. And Dan <laughs> gets the gyro there. I mean, like we've just never had anything bad from there. Um, but. So we look at the specials every day to see if they've got the Mots on Mots right. thing right now. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Saturday was the, neither of us looked at it because Dan was going off to help um, friends of ours in Goffstown build a giant greenhouse. And I was going up to the state house for the uh, critical race theory um, rally. And we didn't think anything of it. And then we heard about the move. I saw the sign that said we're moving. And Monday... Dan gets it in his feed. The Mots on Mots was Saturday. He's like, and they're closed for like until June. Oh. So he's like, damn it. I missed the sandwich. <laughs> That's how good this sandwich is. For All right. We can Anyways. always make, um, we, we broke our fast last week. There are some South African friends who live out on the free coast. Mm-hmm. And they uh, they had made a traditional South African sausage mm-hmm. called Budavos Farmer's Sausage. And uh, we were just on a short, like four four day fast, and so we broke it with that. But the other thing I made, which um, I made them too big, but uh, they were sort of uh, almost like a meat patty, but yeah. you wrap them in bacon mm, yum, and then yum. you make them on the fire. And we used to call those fricadellas in our family. So I was like, oh, all the traditional <laughs> South African food. Yeah. Um, There's lots of there is lots of good food. I mean, I I started to think about like where do, do I only go to a certain number of places. Which I realize I really do, but they all tend to be very um, moderately close to our house. You know, just easy. I like easy things. We love Chen's Garden over on 2nd Street um, for Chinese takeout. Um, I, lo- I go to Murphy's regularly. They have good wings and, I, you know, all sorts of Who wants things. to sponsor our show? We will take advertisements. I'm kidding. And, um, so, Critical now, Race Theory. Yes, <laughs> Critical Race Theory. Okay, so uh, we both went to the rally on Saturday. Yes. And um, I didn't actually know you were going to be there, but I thought you had one of the better signs. Dan says I'm a good sign maker. So for the folks back home, this was basically um, in response to a bill that's being pushed called HB 544. Mm -hmm. It is a bill that is trying to make sure that we are not teaching divisive 
ideas in school so that taxpayer money isn't being used to tell kids that all white people are racist. Right. Because that seems kind of offensive. Or any <laughs> particular race, race is bad. X, Y, or C. Right. right? So, um, so that bill, you know, I think there's some confusion in the state about... Intentional confusion. Yeah. So, so you know, it seems like on the one hand, the progressives are kind of saying, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is being pushed by racists. And, and, and the, the people pushing the bill are like, uh, no, actually, I'm not a racist. And, uh, you know, it was the, the rally itself was actually it was put a- together by the Asian American uh, Association yeah. of New Hampshire, right? So the bill's sponsor, Keith Ammon, his wife... Wife is Chinese. Yes. She's part of this. Um, she's a new citizen of our country. She's lived here, but she just became a citizen. Like in life. the past in a, two yeah. years or so. Um, and Lily Tang Williams was out there. She's also part of that. So I thought it was really, really interesting. The reason I'd mentioned the South African food is we got a bunch of immigrants together. There were probably... It was neat. At first, know, I didn't get why everybody had weird signs until you were all together. And right. So we kind of, at the towards the end, there were great speakers. There were people, you know, every race was represented, yeah. you know, different viewpoints. But the uniting sort of gist of it, of course, was let's not divide people. Like my favorite sign, the one I made that I liked, but someone else borrowed it. And he was like, oh, this sign's getting a lot of action. Everyone loves it, was they fear unity. And I think that's the message, right? You have to look at when there's suddenly all this like strife and people trying to divide folks, you know? And it occurred to me, and I don't know if you agree with this, it's a bit of a tangent here, but we never do that. We never go on tangents. <laughs> oh, no, well, it's, it's this pitting benefits the state, right? Like when you start to pit people against each other, um, instead of all of us sort of working together to focus on the real problem and find some real solutions, we all end up kind of infighting. So I think, you know, that idea of they fear unity is really something we should look at because I'm way more interested in bringing people together mm-hmm. to fight in my opinion, the real enemy, which is uh, an overlarge government uh, that is colluding with big business mm-hmm. to the detriment of just, you know, the average okay. Joe. So I will tell you, if someone had told me in, you know, leaving South Africa after apartheid, you know, working as an anti-apartheid uh, uh, activist coming to the states doing this whole journey and now ending up here where we're, where we're like what like america is not <laughs> it's true. Um, it's like there is i mean there is is racism of course there is but let's be fair libertarians have been out in front of this issue for decades and so like everyone who's like jumping on board right now i think where we're failing actually with the messaging is to say you guys are right there are these problems we do have problems in the police department we do have problems with the way people are sentenced we do have problems with whatever but we're just talking about the problems and it's time to start to talk about the solutions and one of the solutions is private property rights yep. and so it's kind of like this messaging and and you know some of the conspiracy theories are that the communist party has taken over the democratic party certainly a lot of ladies who were talking at the at seem the, to think seem to think that that sort of seemed like a very clear theme you know that people were saying and i don't know if that's true or not but i will tell you i think when we talk about these issues we have to be talking about private property Mm -hmm. and why property is important and why um you know certain values are important and and private property is important because otherwise you end up in a world where there are just elites and a bunch of us who are the serfs and i would much rather have a world where we are mostly developing a middle class which is what uh you know private property rights give us so interesting it's not a direct um transition but i had this thought over here. So um, in Manchester here, we have the mayor's race coming up, those city elections this year. And I noticed in the paper this morning that Joyce Craig is officially in the race now. So now we've got three candidates for mayor here in Manchester. You got Rich Gerard, uh, Victoria Sullivan, and Joyce Craig. Um, uh, Before I go into the property rights thing, um, I did find it interesting when I was reading um, Joyce's press release or whatever, bits of it got published um 
you know, she want the, the quotes that jumped out at me. She wants to see Manchester through the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm like, isn't this like, isn't this a little back? Like, aren't I mean, we past that now? And then we had to make very difficult decisions and change the way we do business, did, we're doing business here. And yeah, like those changes, you know, like closing all the things that people needed, making it more difficult for people to pay their bills, register their cars, do anything involving you know, their lives. And not furloughing a single Goal. city employee. You know, it was funny because I read that article this morning and when I was getting ready for the show, I was thinking, you know, I would have believed any of that if maybe in the past year what we, we saw was a remarkable improvement on things that you could have managed remotely, exactly. right? So, I don't know, when I called the city when they smashed my fence down and broke my juniper tree <laughs> and didn't leave a message and I had to call, you know, six departments and take three weeks to get someone to get back to me. I'm like, should that have happened? Or should it have been like super fast because you literally had nothing to do should because be, you were just sitting at I mean, home getting a really nice celery? Should should you have to mail a check to or bring a check, mail, or, mail there's the first weird one, or bring a check to the highway department to get the, to pay for them to pick up a bulky item at your house? It's so... I agree with you. Had they made heads headway and said, "Oh my God, I never really thought about it," but did you know that we can? We, like, should, we uh, figured out a way to do this so we that we could people streamline don't this. Or you could go. You know what? Here are ten projects that we've sort of been sitting on for years. Maybe we should try and do this. Or hey, you know what? The schools are closed. Maybe now's the time to figure out how to close the four schools that are in the audit that said it needs to be closed no, and implement no, these. Things. We didn't do any no, of that. None of that happened. No one was furloughed. Everyone got paid. You know, we were told we were non-essential, and I don't know why anyone would want a repeat of Joyce Craig for this. Scene. So, I'm good. I've had this. I had this with me last week. So, um, full disclosure, I'm supporting Victoria Sullivan for mayor. I'm not going to make a secret of that. Um, I would support Rich over Joyce. I just don't think that Rich would be... I, I think Joyce and Victoria will make it through the primary. But... Talking about private property rights, there were a couple things Rich put out is homeless plan. You know, everybody's got a plan, supposedly. Um, and some of the things that he's pushing on, I'm thinking, yeah. So we have these things called sober homes, which are basically uh, places where people who are in it's like my house. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, people, there are people living together in one house. So say you have a four bedroom house and there's eight people living in this house. It's not, there isn't um, an organization that's coming and, you know, managing their lives. There are, there is an organization that owns the house and then rents it out to this. So it's kind of like a boarding house, which I happen to live next to a rooming or boarding house that was grandfathered when that change took place decades ago. Um, but Rich would like to see um, crack down on illegally operating sober homes. Not only are they a magnet for out-of-towners, which they are because these are even people from out of town are looking for stable places to live while they're trying to get their lives on track. And he says, who end up homeless on our streets? And then he goes on and I thought, oh, I don't know if you can, I don't know that there's any direct correlation between the homeless and the people who are living in the home. I mean, I think that's a stretch. And should those property owners not be able to do something with their property, especially if it's not disruptive to the neighborhood. And it seems to me, from what I've read, the only thing that's disruptive about it is people just don't like it. Well, there is there is definitely nimbyism, right? Oh that's my God, not in my terrible. backyard, right? So everyone's like, I don't want that. I, I don't want the problems, but I also don't want the solutions, right. you know, which might be where we get into right? all these and issues. And I, I mean, another thing in his plan before I go on to like a different page is that He's talking about uh, doing away with safe stations, which I think Victoria has clearly said that. I know I know Victoria had a bill in when she was a legislator the last time to allow the city to bill the sending city for st safe stations, you know, so which that failed under the Democrats, but whatever. Um, but it, there's a statewide doorways program, so it's a hub hub and spoke type thing. Um, I nimbyism. This was I got the little hair on my thing because he said. Um, he would actively promote the doorway hub located at Catholic Medical Center 
uh, figuring that if people can find their way to a, ple- a fire station for help, they could find their way to Catholic Medical Center. So with the nimbyism in my brain went, oh, so you'd like to push all the homeless people away from the North Endish area and over to my side of the river. <laughs> so I don't know if that's necessarily the best solution either. Um, so anyways, that I just... Those you are- know, here's another thing, though, that... Uh, occurs to me because uh, in Joyce's uh, article today, one of the things she was touting is, oh, we th- they appointed this homeless homeless coordinator, coordinator. right? And, and and I'm like, who makes like ninety some thousand? Yeah, and here. I'm like, doing what? Helping how? Because I know, like, walking on the West Side trails. I mean, there are a lot of tents out yep. already. Um, you know, but one of the things we don't really talk about, and I think it is important, is you can't actually fix these problems unless. The person wants to be fixed. Wants to be fixed. And I think that that is a conversation that actually needs to be had because I'm really torn, right? You watch those shows from the 80s, right? And they talk about tough love. And it was sort of like, oh, you would kick your kid out and you'd, you know, do one intervention. And if they didn't solve their problem, blah, 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 right? And I was like, huh, is that the right solution? That doesn't seem compassionate, right? But at some stage, you actually have to say you are a fully formed human being Function. who is making very poor choices, and we're going to stop helping you right. so that you can hit rock bottom. Right. And, and then maybe choose differently. Because at some stage, it has to be a choice. And so for at, at a minimum with the sober homes, I'm kind of like, well, those seem like the people, people who are, are trying. Are they're choosing, making a better choice. Right? They're, like choosing, they're actually exactly. trying That's to the solve way I the problem. So that is where we should be yep. focusing help and attention. Yep. Well, that's like I think we I think I said it on the show or in some other conversation with somebody. You know, wouldn't it be awesome if some pla- somebody like uh, families in transition or you know New Hampshire, one of the or entities was able to buy. Dan and I were there, yes, drove by yesterday. Um, like the motel over next to family uh, families in transition on the west side. Um, I can't even think of what my hotel it is. It's it's sketchy, and that's where we put that's where we put people that are oh, displaced the, near uh, Maltanda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan and I drove by because as we were coming up the highway yesterday, I thought I saw a tent encampment on the there west side one. of the river yeah. building up. So we were like, "How are they even getting there?" Because that I know you can't. They, they come from the pedestrian bridge that goes over, and you go up and down, and I know exactly where you're. But talking that would about. still the be the one behind the walls. Well, well this anyway. one was this one was below the dog park this way, right. which means there's a river. Like if you go down, there were tents beside behind the dog park, which I took pictures of because I'm like, where's my alderman worried about that? Apparently not. Um, so you would have to go down the river. Uh, closer to Nults, which we were trying to figure out like, wow, that's like, this is an awful lot of effort. But the problem is, is that um, we're, these things just keep bubbling up. Well, the other thing that I think is important that we should also talk about is that, you know, we have, as a country, has not recovered from the from the economic crises. And so when folks back home hear all this stuff and you're really happy when you get your stimmy check and, your free money. oh, we're printing like $6 trillion and all of that, you actually have to understand that it is not... Like, none of this is sustainable. People no. are getting poorer right. because we don't have sound money. Because everything just get, when you print fake money, everything just gets expensive. So so, so you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're creating a bigger money supply, but that means that there's more of this money, which means it's actually worth less, right? So when you read an article and, you know, someone says, oh, this is, uh, you know, it's it's one billion dollars in 1986 dollars, right? You should ask yourself, well, why are dollars the same worth the same yeah. they used to be, right? When we were still on the gold standard. So, like today, I saw a tweet from um, Valinsky, Comrade Valinsky, and he had said something about, oh, we need to, uh, you know, increase the minimum wage. And but I that's was just like, fake. Well, well, yeah. It's just creating another layer of false. He, here's a great example. So I think it was in 1964. So before we went off the silver standard, uh, this is round about the time that, you know, President Kennedy wanted to put America back on the silver standard. And then, he I don't know, killed. got assassinated. Seems suspicious to me. <laughs> but basically, if you took five quarters from 19, I think it was 64. Don't quote me on that. But it was like back in the 60s. Those 
that, that were made of real silver. Yes. The melt value of that money, so that was how much a minimum wage was right. in 1964. If you take that same amount of silver coins today, it's worth $24. But that's so real lo money. And behold, it actually, if we weren't debasing our money, thereby making everyone poorer, yeah. and then helping the cronies and bailing out the banks and making other people poorer because of the mismanagement of the entire country, then we wouldn't see all these poor people and we wouldn't see all this suffering. So I want people to understand, it is your own government that is doing this to you. And you need to say enough. I agree. I mean, it's just, it's, it's people have to start caring yeah, about or, where we're listening like, or like, thinking or where stopping, like just take it one, one iota deeper than you normally do and think if that makes sense. Because we, it, it, this unsustainable model that we've created, you can't live forever on debt. I mean, we all understand that. Once you're paying one credit card with another credit Having card, no debt is the most wonderful that. thing in the entire <laughs> world. Um, before we run out of town, I do want to talk about two quick things. Um, next Tuesday, May 4th, there is a special election in Ward 6 for the alderman over there. Make sure if you live in Ward 6, you get out and support Sebastian Sharanoff. Um, he's a great guy. I think he'd do good by um, representing more. Remember six. it by being like, it sounds like a good vodka cocktail. Yes, yes, there you go. <laughs> go vote for the vodka cocktail. Um, that's Tuesday, May 4th in Ward 6. And then this Saturday, um, May 1st at 9 a.m., uh, We Heart West, which yes. is a great organization, is doing the first cleanup of the year. They're cleaning up Wolf Park over on the west side 9 a.m on harvell street um they'll provide the supplies and everything we've ironically that's one of the places i went and cleaned up with them probably two years ago now I think, um, yeah, we'll they'll be doing more of those and it's great it's great to see people out there um wanting to clean up the city um but also you know what Wherever you live, look around when just you park your car and, and just clean you. where you are. Right. Like, take pride in who you are yep. and what's around you and what's happening. And then each of us doing a little bit will make our society yep. better. It does. Takes all, takes a village. Takes a quillage, as I like to say. <laughs> so, um, rain, sun, it's back and forth. We're typical April, May weather. Um, I bought a Dee Thatcher. It's coming on Friday. I'm gonna dethatch my lawn. I'm all excited. Oh no, so we are nice. we're going full wild. I'm we're like doing clover. clover. We're doing and... clover, but I'm gonna dethatch first. Okay. So you can buy it. Right. Guys, check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, available on Amazon and on my website, carlagarrick.com. That's all we got for this week. We'll see you next week. I think Victoria Sullivan's gonna join us. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Bye. Bye guys.